mano davanti no? One, one factor in the case of France has certainly been that the country, perhaps more than other European countries, has been very exposed in terms of foreign policy, in terms of um, deployments in other countries, especially in Muslim countries, but also in particular in relation to its domestic policy, that notion of laïcité, the very aggressive form of secularism that France is imposing on on its citizens has been perceived by many Muslims not as secularism but as essentially a form of Islamophobia. If you look at what extremists are saying about different European countries, it is always France that comes up first. They really hate France because they see it essentially not only as a crusader nation like a lot of other European countries, but a nation with an explicitly aggressive anti-Islamic agenda. In, uh, in Europe, in a lot of places, you essentially have areas that are almost, I would call them almost ungoverned spaces, the same way we talk about the tribal areas of Pakistan or places in Libya where the state hasn't engaged for a very long time. And as we saw in this case, and as we have seen in a lot of other cases, ideology only really comes in at a certain point. At the beginning, people are frustrated and alienated, and Often the first people that talk to them, that take them seriously, that listen to their problems are extremists and that's why they win. A lot of countries and policymakers understand that you actually have to integrate people, you have to offer them a place in society, a place where they feel they belong, because ultimately what makes all of this possible is that they don't feel that they belong into that society. That's why they can kill 84 people without caring about it. Thank you.